How's everyone doing today, okay? Monday, I know it's a beautiful day out. You're here during lunchtime, but hopefully it's going to be worth your uh, while. My name's Professor Hargadon. This is Professor Lourdes. We're faculty members in the School of Business Administration. And it's hard in 50 minutes or 45 minutes to teach you everything we'd like you to know about personal finance. So this is going to be a broad overview. The slides you have in front of you, though, are we're going to sort of be interactive. There's some things you're going to be filling in. We're going to do some little exercises, play a game at the end. And there are some prizes as we go along, OK? So hopefully you'll look forward to that, all right? If you have questions, we're going through it. Just raise your hand. and. and Please write things down, try to stay focused, and uh, I think you'll get something out of it. All right. First, uh, I'm going to lead in before Professor Ward I get started, assuming this, uh, or here we go again, Francis, this thing. All right. When I was growing up, my parents would always tell me, and you've probably heard the expression, money doesn't grow on trees, right? You got to earn it and all that, you know, those old uh, cliches. Well, now, where does money come from? Now, the reason I show you this little slide is I'm going to give you a little piece of advice. Someday, when you're parents and you have children, little when my kids were little, they loved to go to the ATM machine, and they loved to be able to press buttons, and then they would see money come out, because I usually use the ATM for withdrawals. And then we'd be out at the mall or you know, somewhere shopping and they would want to get a toy or something. I said, no, we didn't save. We don't have the money for that. And then he'd come back to me and say, but dad, all you have to do is go to this machine, punch numbers in, and money comes out. They never saw the deposit side. So the moral of that story is always show your children that deposit side. Okay, welcome, ladies. You all have the <laughs> handout that uh, goes with this? If not, we'll give you a copy. Professor Lord, I is going to give you the overview of what we're going to do today, and uh, I'll be back on a little bit later in the presentation, okay? So I'll turn it over to uh, Professor Lord, I. Okay, thank you. Okay, I uh, appreciate you uh, making the effort to be here today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, financial literacy, money management, okay? We'll, uh, we'll define what we uh, we think financial literacy is. Talk a little bit about a couple of, uh, I think, important uh, facts in regards to uh, financial literacy and uh, professional or uh, individual uh, education in this area. Also want to talk a little bit, and I'll focus primarily on uh, financial statements, personal financial statements, okay? And then we'll wrap up with a, uh, a couple of uh, little exercises at the end here. Back. There we go. All right. Uh, Webster's New World Dictionary defines financial as anything having to do with money. Money matters. Okay. And literacy, as you can see here, means that you have some kind of knowledge. So financial literacy uh, is nothing more than an individual's knowledge of financial or money matters. So that's pretty straightforward. That's pretty simple to uh, to comprehend. There's a group called the uh, Jumpstart Coalition, and in starting in 2002, they did a uh, survey every couple of years of high school students, and they asked them certain questions on economics and financial matters. Now, they're funded by the Merrill Lynch Foundation, and primarily what their objective was was to increase financial literacy in students from kindergarten all the way through, uh, through high school. One of the questions that they asked, okay, we'll take a look at in a minute, but what's interesting is in 2006, they, uh, they surveyed uh, about 7,000 students across the nation, uh, about 40 different states. They're all high school seniors. And they gave them these questions, and the results were that they scored a 57%, 57%. Yeah, wait, if you got a 57 on an exam, would you be happy about that? I don't think so, right? Well, I call this the perfect storm because in 2008, did everybody know what happened to our economy in 2008? Okay, start taking those down. All right. So I call this the perfect storm because in 2008, once again, they administered this exam to a variety of students all over the 
country, and they scored a this thing is hair trigger. They scored a, uh, a 48 percent. Okay. So you have the economy going down, and students who are graduating from high school, okay, their abilities in this area are also declining. This is uh, not a good situation. In 2008, for the first time, they asked college students to take an exam like this. And college students, once again, a little more mature, a little more worldly, so to speak, scored a 62%. 62%. Okay, and that's not very good. That's not very good. Once again, you wouldn't want to get a 62 on an examination. Now, I'd like you to take a look at a couple of the questions that they asked these students. This uh, the first one says, could you lose your health insurance if your parents become unemployed? Okay, if your parents become unemployed. Well, the answer to that question is yes, you can. Okay, yes, you can. And what's interesting is 60% of these high school students, these are seniors, got that question wrong. Now, you might ask yourself, what about college students? Okay, how does college students fare? Well, 30% of them got it wrong. 30%. So they did better. They did a little bit better. The next question I think is kind of interesting. It says, is a house with a fixed rate mortgage a good hedge against sudden inflation? There's a few things you have to understand. First of all, what do you mean by a fixed rate? Secondly, what do you mean by a hedge? Uh, and third, what's inflation? Okay, what's inflation? Well, once again, when they ask the high school students this question, 64%, better than two-thirds, got it wrong. Okay. Two thirds. All right. And once again, the answer to that question is: Is a house with a fixed rate mortgage, yes, a good hedge against sudden inflation? And it is. It is because that rate will stay the same. Inflation has a tendency to drive the interest rates up. College students, how did they fare? How did the college students fare? Well, 40% got it wrong. 40% of the college students got it wrong. Okay. A little bit better, but once again. Probably not as good as it should be for college students. I think this last question really tells the tale. Which of the following would yield a higher return over the next 18 years? All right, and they ask savings bond, savings account, these interest-bearing checking accounts, okay, or stocks, okay. Stocks. How many think it would be U.S. savings bond? Anybody? Okay, got a couple people. Good. How about savings accounts? Paying interest. Right. How about checking accounts? Paying interest. How about bonds? All right. Some of you don't think of anything, right? All right. Well, the fact of the matter is, the answer to the question is stocks. Only 17%, okay, got it right. Got it right in this case. Okay, 83% of high school students got it wrong. But once again, the scary thing about this is, when they ask college students this question, okay, when they ask college students this question, only 19% got it right. 81% got it wrong. So we have a problem. There's a lot more studies that are out there, but our time is limited, so I really can't get into those in much detail. All right. But it's something you want to think about. When it comes to money management, the important thing is that you have to have a plan. That plan has to be flexible because it's your future and your lives are going to change. Right now, your biggest interest is you know, getting through the course, uh, the semester, probably just getting through this period at this point in time. But the fact of the matter is, it's going to change. Okay, it's going to change. You'll finish your, uh, your college career. Hopefully, you'll go on. You'll be employed. Okay, Maybe you'll end up uh, getting married at some point, having children, sending them to school, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of changes are going to take place in your life. The one thing about a plan you want to keep in mind, though, is you should have something that's written down, okay? Something that's tangible, something that's in front of you, okay, that you can periodically look at, okay? I'm not talking on a daily basis, but from time to time you want to review this. As I said earlier, okay, that's going to change as your life changes, as your needs change. More and more people are going to be dependent on you. One of the key phrases that we use in this course that we do teach in uh, financial uh, planning, if you will, personal finance, is if you fail to plan, you plan to, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. very good. You catch? All right, good. All right, you plan to fail. 
thing is, what you want to think about is, do you have any plans for your future? Okay, for your future. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about personal financial statements. How many of you ever heard the term financial statements before? Okay, a couple of people. Some of you, you haven't heard this before. Well, look, one of the first things you're going to need when you go to a bank to get a, a loan sometime in the future, okay, is some idea, okay, of your personal situation, personal financial situation. Uh, and oftentimes, the balance sheet comes into play here. Now, in a corporation, when we see a balance sheet, we're talking about assets that will equal your liabilities plus owner's equity. That's called the accounting equation, the balance sheet equation. Uh, it covers one date and time, okay, one date and time. For an individual, okay, it's very similar, okay, it's very similar, all right? It's assets equal liabilities plus net worth. More commonplace is referred to as assets minus liability equals net worth. Now, the important thing here is that we want to be able to define our assets and our liabilities, and obviously then, what does net worth really mean, okay? So we're going to look at this equation. All right, we'll drill down on it a little bit. First thing, assets, okay, are things that you own, okay? There's something that you own, and they have some kind of monetary value, monetary value. All right, all right. They can be broken down into uh, various various types, if you will, okay, various types. For example, okay, your current assets, sometimes your most liquid assets, would include things like cash or if somebody owes you money, okay? That's considered to be an asset. That's considered to be an asset, all right? The non-current assets are anything that's typically going to last more than a year, okay? We call those non-current assets, all right? Many of us have things would fall into the tangible category. Okay, you will have these things, a house, okay, car, okay, et cetera. All right. Different types of uh, investments, okay, stocks and bonds, okay, that you will put your money in, hopefully to get a return. Now, what we want to differentiate very quickly is, okay, what's the difference between a stock and a bond? Okay, what's the difference? Well, if you own a share of stock, you actually are a, uh, an owner in the company. Okay, you own a piece of the company, so to speak. If you issue, or if you buy, I should say, a bond, okay, you've actually loaned the company money, okay, and you're going to be considered a creditor of the company. In both instances, you're looking to get some type of return. Does anybody know the type of return that a stockholder is looking to get? We call that. Anybody know what that's Same called? Amount. Share. Well, you'll get a share of stock, but what kind of return are you going to get on that share of stock? Let's say you buy a share of stock for, for $40. What are you looking to get down the road? Okay, anybody know? What would it be? A dividend. Very good. Okay, very good. When you borrow money, okay, you would have to pay something to the bank. When somebody borrows from you, you're going to have to, they're going to have to pay you something. What do we call that? What do we call that? It's called rent on the money. Anybody have any idea what that would be? Yeah. No, it'll be called interest. Okay, interest. All right. Liabilities are debts that you owe, okay, to others. You've got to pay somebody something when you have a liability. Now, some good examples, okay, once again, are broken into two categories. Short term and long term. Short term usually have to be paid uh, within a uh, within a year, All right. and they would include things like your credit card balance, telephone bills, utility bills, etc. Right. The long term is non current. Generally, it would be greater than a year, and these would include things like your your student loan, or your car loan balance, etc. Right. You're going to be paying those off over a specified period of time. Generally, greater than a year. Now, your net worth is the difference between these two, okay? Essentially, it boils down to what's owned minus what's owed, okay? What's owed. And that gives you, essentially, your wealth, okay? Your wealth, that's how it's defined. Question, how could you increase your net wealth? Given this equation, how might you increase your wealth, so to speak, or your net worth? What do you think? 
could you do? What could you do? Get your hand up. Go. Decrease your own. Okay, you can try and decrease your liabilities. That's good. Okay. What else might you do? Somehow do what? There's two parts to that, right? Okay. Increase your assets. Yeah, somehow increase your assets. Maybe, okay, maybe, all right, if you can invest some monies into assets that will give you a return, that's going to help increase your assets, right? That'll help increase your assets. These are things you have to think about down the road. We, we throw out prizes like we're feeding the sea lions at the show, you know, there, at the, just to give you a sense. <laughs> All right, once again, we're looking at another financial statement. Uh, it's called the Statement of Cash Flows. It covers a period of time. Right. Essentially, it's your revenues, okay, cash coming in, minus, okay, your expenses. All right, that'd be cash going out. Hopefully, you have more cash coming in than what's going out. Okay, if you do, you got a surplus. If not, you're in a deficit situation. Okay, you're in a deficit situation. Now, in this country today, uh, in this country today, 43% of American families are in a deficit situation. Essentially, they spend more than they bring in. Okay, they spend more than they can bring in. How can you do that? How can you spend more than you bring in? What do you got to do? Yeah, you got to go into debt. Okay, you got to go into debt. There's over, it's probably about, right now, it's probably about $800 billion in credit card debt in this country. That's a big number. That's a big number. All right, what's the difference between salary and take-home pay? Now, once again, we're looking to define this cash inflow. What would, what would be put in this category? Yes? The salary is like how much your job pays before tax is taken out. Thank you. In other words, the net amount represents taxes, any other kind of withholdings you might have, right? Okay, good. All right. Dividend income. Where did we say dividends came from? Anybody remember? Stocks. From stocks, okay, they come from stocks. Then you have interest income, okay, interest income. Remember we said about interest income, okay? <laughs> Somebody's gonna pay you money on your money, all right? Scholarship, all right, a student loan, all right, a student loan. Now remember, when you do borrow money, that's also gonna create a liability. That balance sheet has to balance, okay? What are your outflows? Typically, personal expenses, okay? Expenses fall into two categories, fixed and variable. The fixed expenses in total don't change, okay? Based on some kind of activity. Example, rent. Typically, your rent's gonna be the same for the entire year, okay? Loan payments, typically will remain the same. I, car insurance payments. These are, once again, they're not going to change based on the, uh, some kind of activity, generally for the year. Things that do change, okay, are things that we have some degree of uh, exercise over. For example, food, okay, oops, something happened here, there we go, all right, clothing, all right, cell phone, gasoline. Right. The question is, which one do you think you're going to have the most control over? Well, what it boils, what it boils down to, okay, is that the the uh, expense over which you can make a decision, okay, is going to give you the most control, okay, on a regular basis. And those typically are your variable expenses. One important thing to remember is that when you break your expenses into two categories, the fixed and variable, uh, it's going to help you for budgeting purposes down the road. Uh, and budgeting is very important. Once again, you know, statistically in this country, 56% of Americans don't have a budget, and that creates a problem for them. Okay, it creates a real problem financially. Dr. Hart and I'll talk a little bit more about budgeting in a minute. All right, real quick. Statement of cash flows, cash in, cash out. All right, you'd like to see a surplus. The question is, all right, how can you increase your surplus? Well, obviously you want more coming in, but on the other hand, maybe you could reduce some of it going out. The question is, you know, what are you going to do with the cash surplus if you do generate a cash surplus? It all depends on what your financial goals are. Are you going to spend it in the short run? Or are you going to put in some kind of investment? Okay. Once again, you have to think about your financial plan. Nobody's going to do this for you. Nobody's going to do it for you. 
Now what we're going to do right now is on the next page, okay, the next slide, you should have a, uh, a little overview of certain types of accounts. All right, and we want to know whether they're revenue, expense, asset, or liability. All right, I want each of you to take a minute right now and fill this in, uh, and we'll come back to it in a second. So take a minute, see what you can do. You can confer with one another. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to pass out a calculator that you're not going to keep, but you need it for my part. I'm going to just go work there. Just check. And you should only have one of those cells on each row checked. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. 